Hello, my friends. This is Dr. Diana as patient, and I am pretty ill. So who out there is responding to mast cell medications? Have you noticed that you can breathe easier, that you may flush much less? Have your GI symptoms leveled out most of the time? Or do you have no idea what I'm talking about? <laughs> now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, please take a peek at the Driscoll Theory Part 1, or you can search for mast cell disorders on my website. I, I think it's there. Okay. Um, let's see. Or if you're on YouTube only, you can click on the little squares at the upper right hand corner of this page and cruise around my videos a bit and look for mass cell related videos. Now, okay, let's get down to it. As requested, drum roll please. Brought my sticks. That's really bad. Okay. Um, what are histamine foods? Woohoo! As you likely know, blocking the reaction of histamines is critical for us. Histamine and other cytokines and mast cell mediators, but today we'll focus on histamine, causes our vessels and our blood-brain barrier to become leaky and it encourages vasodilation. Of course, that's our enemy when we have POTS because our blood um, it heads south and it pools and it doesn't circulate properly. That is bad, bad, bad. So getting on the proper antihistamines can be a lifesaver, as can mast cell stabilizers. Now, tell me if I need to review my disclaimer here. Please see the disclaimer on the site, or better yet, my video about my disclaimer. I love that one. No, I cannot diagnose or treat you, certainly not over the internet, okay? I'm here to share what I have learned from one patient to another, okay? I'm trying to become Masto Masta. Here are my notes from the Mast Cell Conference. You know, I'm going through them very carefully. But I cannot substitute for advice from your doctor or Mast Cell Specialist, nor would I want to do that. Okay? Okay. I have to be careful because Mast Cell conditions can be deadly if we are not careful. Now, what are histamine foods, you ask? More importantly, are Snickers bars or ice cream in particular? Histamine food? No, these lists are in no way complete. I am trying to hit the high spots for you, okay? There's conflicting advice on the internet, what a shock, and it can be overwhelming at first. So we'll break it down and I'll cover some of the most important histamine foods with you first, okay? There are three types of foods that we need to avoid most of the time when we have mast cell disorders. Number one, foods that commonly cause urticaria, hives, or for me, eczema. Those include shellfish, fish, some nuts, chocolate, tomatoes, some cheeses, milk, wheat, a few other things. Personally, I don't get hives, so most of these don't really affect me, but if you have cutaneous mastocytosis or numerous skin signs or spots, watch out for these. Number two, there are foods that cause mast cells to degranulate and release histamine into your system. These include shellfish, strawberries, tomatoes, chocolate, see a pattern here? Okay. Pineapple, some fish, alcohol, oh, and uncooked egg whites. Okay. Well, I think I can pretty easily give up the uncooked egg whites. How about you? Um, okay, number three. Foods that actually contain histamine, that's obviously not good. That would include things like fermented foods, for example, fermented cheeses, camembert, brie, cheddar cheese, parmesan cheese, brewer's yeast, shellfish again, canned fish, important, many fin fish. Now, what fish don't have fins, I ask you? I'm trying to imagine those poor little guys trying to swim around, so maybe you can help me with that, but fin fish. Tomatoes, spinach, spinach is otherwise so good for you. Red wine, oh yeah, boy. Beer, unpasteurized milk, ew. Aged or processed meats like sausage, ham, beef jerky, fermented soy products, and fermented veggies like sauerkraut. Now a big one is leftover meat or fish. Basically cook it and eat it, and it's okay. Now immediately freeze whatever's left over. Don't put it in your refrigerator and eat it the next day. Trust me on this one. I went ahead and tested that. You know me, I gotta test everything. Um, with some taco meat one day. Oh my heavens. So now, yeah. okay. Having said this, I understand that we won't always react every time. And depending on how well our mast cells are controlled, 
we can often sneak in histamine foods, thank heavens. Now, I'm kind of a life is short gal myself um, because I have a decent command of my mast cells. Unless I'm under a lot of stress, then they have a field day in my body, but um, I've kind of learned what I need to avoid and what I can have as long as I don't go crazy with it, okay? You'll want to make note of your triggers as you experience them and be sure to have an EpiPen. Some people are so sensitive. They must be very, very, very strict with their diet. One exposure can be life-threatening. Don't we all know someone who will go into anaphylaxis if they eat shrimp? Now, these patients need a mast cell specialist on their team. But for us folks who can handle a little histamine, you'll probably end up with a top four or five of must avoids, and the rest will be must be cautious, okay? On my must avoid list is leftover meat, chicken, or fish. As I mentioned, it must be cooked fresh. Spinach, must avoid. Red wine, mm. and the uncooked egg whites. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of threw that in because it's one of the easier ones to give up. Um, and I try to be careful with cheese, but the rest of them, I have awareness of, but they don't usually trigger me unless I have too many or too much of them. Now, my son will eat Snickers bars, for example, and he says he stops when his heart starts going crazy. Okay, that's probably pushing it too far, my friends. He ate a big container of strawberries, and I caught this rash on his back. Take a look. It just lasted a minute. Um, I kind of found it by accident, in fact. I, it, it looked like his ears were kind of red. So I lifted up his shirt, took a quick picture, and that rash was gone. I kid you not. So learn your limits. My limits allow me ice cream, even chocolate ice cream. But if it's double chocolate with chocolate chunks and chocolate syrup, I need to not eat the entire half gallon. So you get my drift here. This is where our moms were right everything in moderation. I don't want to take this too lightly though because some patients who are so extremely affected um, can't even do a little bit of some foods. At the mast cell conference, for example, we couldn't wear any fragrance. Uh, some people who are extremely affected can't even leave their homes. Um, my heart really goes out to them. But that is one reason we have such a wonderful community right here on social media. I love it. Now, I'll post this topic on the forum on prettyill.com. Please join us there. I think I've worked out most of the growing pains on the forum. <laughs> and I have a couple of wonderful volunteers that are going to help me with moderating the forum and keeping control of those kind of buggy things. So thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. You are great. I appreciate getting to know so many of you, and I'm humbled by the generosity and caring of basically strangers that I meet even if just virtually, we become friends. Thanks, guys. Now, let's continue to change our worlds one brain cell at a time if we have to. Gentle hugs to you all.